Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about a few effective reading strategies, tips that I would use myself and that I have used myself and that I just want to share with you guys, especially for those with upcoming exams and especially for those with upcoming board exams. I just want you to guys to be able to do your best. So I hope you find this video useful and once again don't forget to like and subscribe and share my video you guys. And don't forget to leave comments down below if you like this video or if you want to see more content. If it's love that you need, you can take it from me, cause I'm the one So of course the kind of reading you do has to be suited to the material you're reading and why you're reading. So two kinds of reading that I usually do, skimming and scanning, and the other one is actual reading or like analytical reading. Skimming is just to get an overview of the idea of the paper, while scanning is looking through the text to find specific information. Since I'm doing a lot of reading through a lot of articles, I mean, I mean like a lot of articles for thesis, for my master's thesis, I do skimming and scanning a lot. I think I said a lot like five times already. But I think what would be more useful for the viewers is actual studying or analytical reading. Reading to get the information and put it in your head and understand it and remember it as best as you can. I use the S and R, I just call it an S and R method. S is for survey, and is for and, and R is for reading. So you start with surveying the material, you look through it, you glance through the chapters or through however much text there is, you look at the main topics and the subtopics, you look at the headings, and maybe you can read a bit of the summary just to get an overall idea, just to prime your mind for what you're about to read. It's the same principle as, oh, what am I gonna eat today? I'm gonna eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. Or what am I going to do in the gym today? I'm gonna do deadlifts, squats, bench presses, and dumbbell presses. So it's just an overview to guide you through the actual process. The surveying process should just be quick and light, just like a warm-up to get you into the zone for the actual reading. <sighs> so when you read, it's important to actively engage yourself. Yes, there might be a lot of material to read, and yes, you might not want to read it all, but by actively engaging your brain and your senses, you can avoid falling asleep and you can make your time count. If you're reading for an hour, and you didn't get any of the information, that means you weren't reading right. Or maybe it's just really difficult. Sorry guys. There are five things you can do to make your reading more active and to engage yourself, to connect yourself with the material. So first, the most common one is to read and color. So this means using highlighters, using colored pencils, colored pens, to underline or make other markings in the text. A lot of people I know do this thing first and I wouldn't advise you to color your whole text before you actually understand it. I would advise you to use the other strategies first, maybe, and then once you reread the material or if there's something really important that you don't understand or you really want to remember, then you can highlight that and that alone. You don't need to highlight the word the and the word and, things like that. I mean, you're just gonna end up with a whole block of colored text. The second thing I do a lot is read plus note-taking. When I say note-taking, you can do it during or after every section that you read. For example, you're reading about the stages of a certain disease and it's all in paragraph form and it's just hard to absorb. So what you can do is get yourself a little scratch paper, simply put it right beside your book, or you, if you don't mind writing on the text paper itself, then go ahead and then just write down keywords 
and try to summarize it in your own word. So first stage, symptoms. Second stage, worsening. Third stage, and so on. In relation to this, the third thing I do a lot is read and draw. Drawing just helps you engage your creative mind and it just if you make such a unique drawing or a unique picture for you, then you're gonna remember it like no one else. <laughs> Here are some of the drawings that I did during my board exams. I would really just try to make it creative because there was so much information that if you just remember everything is text, it won't work. Visual images in the brain are really powerful and they will help you so so insanely much the fourth thing i do a lot as well i don't know how many times i'm saying a lot in this video anyway it's read and recite a lot of people do this as well it's just basically you reading the paragraph or whatever information out loud to yourself this is most useful when reciting things to remember. Like if you're trying to remember the 21 amino acids, you might want to recite them out loud. This is involving the sense of hearing and just varying the senses that you involve in your reading or your studying will help you a lot. <laughs> I have no I have no synonyms in my head. I'm sorry guys. Um related to that um, aside from reading and reciting, like 4.A or 4.B is reading and singing. If you find music or if you find a beat, if you find a song that you can sing your material along to, that is great. Like I always recommend if you want to memorize the periodic table of elements, there is the periodic table of elements song. There's hydrogen and helium, there's the and there's helium, boring, carbon, everywhere, nitrogen, and there's with oxygen, so you can breathe, and fire, 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 I'm gonna stop singing because it's embarrassing, but I hope I get my point across because I don't, I basically don't use a table of elements these days anymore, but I still remember that song. And the fifth way is to just read and ask. Ask yourself questions about things that you don't understand, maybe, or if you're preparing for a test, then ask yourself the questions that you think your professor will ask you. So this is very useful in prepping your brain for the actual exam. Of course, I didn't just use one of these techniques at a time. I combined them all and I used them on different days because, again, involving the se different senses or involving the creative side and the logical sides of your brain in all of the things you're studying will just help you remember it so much easier and that's just what I want to help you guys with. I have my other videos on supplements that I take like Memo Plus, I used to take a lot during the boards and um, other things I do like I eat healthy, I keep myself healthy, I sleep well and I make sure I have a lot of water and my study environment, my study bubble Check out my other videos guys because hopefully they will also help you study and prepare for your exam. And yeah, I just hope this video was useful for you. And I'm getting shy because uh, people are coming around and I'm videoing in a public place because I have nowhere else to video because the lighting in my room is just like horrible. Once again guys, I just wish you the best of luck and I really hope my videos are helping you. Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe and share my videos. I love you guys. I have to get to class. I have to prepare for my report. Bye. See you in the next.